Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you? Good evening, sir. Uh, hi, fine. how are you? I'm fine. And you? Hi. Fine. Thank you for asking. Hi. Let's see. Rosa, Esmeralda, right? Eric, Cardosa, Sandra. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being on time. <laughs> Let's see who else joins. Have you, this is your first time in this kind of classes or have you studied before in Inglés Corporativo? I studied before teaching. You studied before, okay. Like yeah. the previous module? No. I mean the 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 model one. Module one, okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Sandra, how are you? Are you ready for the class? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, because you're kind of a mute. Let's see, Rosa Esmeralda. Hi, Noé, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you. Okay, okay nice to see you I again. I want module uh, affair is to the, is to the um, academy English. You're studying in- uh, But, uh, uh -huh. but, uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't, no. <laughs> Because I I lost work it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I I can student. Okay, perfect. So you have you have you have been studying here in English Corporative, right? Also. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Jaime Reyes, Carla Merino, Jaime Hernandez. Thank you for coming. I will be your teacher for this module, which is going to take like around four weeks. And uh, let's see here. And you can, well, you're welcome. We are going, we're about to, to begin right now. Let's see, this will be intermediate level right intermediate okay let's see here something happened here okay perfect so we are going to begin with the class i'm going to give you a little bit of introduction as we always do in this kind of uh, classes and then we are going to begin with with the topics right so Let's see here. So um, thank you for coming. My name is Jorge Asensio. I will be your teacher and you can call me George. You can call me Mr. Asensio. You can call me teacher. And we are going to begin right now with the English class. First of all, I'm going to provide this information in Spanish so everybody will know. I guess I know some of you, right? Ya saben quién soy algunos, algunos ya los he visto antes. It's good to see you again. And um, I don't know if you have a work in the platform. ¿Ya trabajaron en la plataforma o todavía no? Have you worked in the platform? Uh, no, I have a problem in the plataforma. You have a yeah, problem, I have a problem to, yeah. to enjoying it. So you know you were not able to log in. No. Okay, I'm going to report that. Let's see. We have Rosa. <clears throat> okay, very good. I'm going to report that. And also uh try to work in the platform. Traten de trabajar siempre en la plataforma, ya que al final los jueves, en este caso sería el viernes, porque vamos a reponer lo del lunes, lo vamos a reponer el viernes. Así que vamos a trabajar siempre en la plataforma antes de terminar la semana. 
por lo menos la sección que nos toca, ¿verdad? Ya vamos a hablar acerca de las secciones. Las tareas se encuentran en la plataforma y se recomienda trabajar en ellas justo después de clase o cuando ustedes tengan listo el contenido porque yo, lo tienen disponible siempre. Todas las tareas de los temas ya cubiertos tienen que estar completas antes de cada viernes a la medianoche, ya que ese registro es enviado a Instaform semanalmente y material de apoyo será completado a criterio del profesor en formato digital. Now, eh, with the homework or the sections, right? La semana uno, vamos a ver sección uno y sección dos. So, vamos a ver dos secciones. La semana dos, sección tres y midterm. Entonces, ustedes van a saber eh, ahí cuando, cómo vamos a estar con la sección y el midterm. Vamos, vamos a terminar el midterm exam. La semana tres, la sección cuatro. Y la semana 4, la sección 5 y el final exam que lo tienen en la plataforma. Si ustedes lo terminan antes, pues eh, está bien. So we have here, uh, además siempre las normas de convivencia, ¿verdad? Si hay ruido a su alrededor o si no pueden hablar, pues me pueden avisar antes. Teacher, yo voy a estar de oyente. Hoy no puedo hablar porque estoy, hay mucho ruido en, en donde yo vivo o donde yo estoy. Y le ponen silencio y no hay problema, ¿verdad? Eh, la lista de asistencia, pues en este caso nada más yo voy a tomar en cuenta su, su participación y también que estén presentes en la clase. Siempre en las cámaras, pues ustedes tienen que poner su nombre completo. Si es posible tener la cámara encendida, se los agradecería mucho. También que participen, ¿verdad? Cuando tengamos alguna actividad, hablar, una presentación. Traten de, de, traten de realizarla porque así vamos a tratar de, de seguir este, practicando el inglés. Así lo vamos a practicar, ya que de esta manera es un poco difícil, eh, pero así lo vamos a hacer. Pueden usar el chat, pueden usar el grupo de WhatsApp si tienen alguna pregunta durante el día eh, o alguna pregunta de la plataforma. Pueden mandar screenshots, levantar la mano siempre y siempre mantener respeto, ya que todos somos personas diferentes y trabajamos de diferente manera, pero tratemos de ser respetuosos, tanto como con eh, los compañeros como con el maestro o los maestros, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, hoy iniciamos este curso, la duración son 60 minutos, vamos a desarrollar los temas y vamos a trabajar los ejercicios en la plataforma y después, pues, le van a dar el diploma eh, por eso es importante terminar la plataforma, trabajar en la plataforma, para que ustedes no tengan problemas con el diploma. Questions about this? Preguntas acerca de la introducción? No, no questions. Question. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. So we are going to have a little bit of introduction because I would like to know you a little bit and I would like to know a little bit of your level of English and everything. So we are going to say your name why do you want to learn english and what do you like to do in your free time right like if you like to play video games read learn another language and uh, let's start with noe because i already know you right noe how are you noe how's everything hi teacher uh, good evening everyone have you been practicing your english have you been studying english yes teacher My yes. Page, this, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, for example, the, uh, we can I, I study English. Uh, I see a video in YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, this class I uh, see in the this day in the afternoon. about the topic the 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 the, the night uh, the voice active and, and voice passive okay very good so you have been studying the passive voice and active voice and all of that yes okay perfect 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 and tell me are you still working or do you have more free time what do you do in your free time right now noe Okay, in my free time and this uh, in the uh, weekend, uh, I'm going with my my kids and 
in the the I travel with my family and my kids. Center uh, small uh, La Cascada in the in the in the morning and then I go uh, to lunch with, with um, like like family in the afternoon and uh, uh, when uh, play so soccer in the night uh, we uh, see a movie in oh. my house okay so most of the time you spend it with your family very good thank you Nair, for your participation it's nice to see you again and it's nice to see that you're still studying english very good let's see maria siguenza how are you it's nice to see you again nice to see you teacher too and have you been studying english or repeat please have you been studying English? I started studying English. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you're always working at night or you stop working? Yes, always. Always, always working. Work. Okay, See, yeah, perfect. Always. Okay, hopefully we will have you in future classes. Uh, probably you will have a little bit of time to rest right in your house. Today rest. <laughs> okay, do you you dress on Tuesdays? No, only today. But ah, only tomorrow, today. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, I have to working. Uh -huh, you have to work. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you for your participation, Maria. Nice to see you again, and it's good to see you again speaking English. Very good. Let's see, Rosa. Rosa, tell me, uh, why do you want to learn English? Uh, I learn to English. Um, in my case, if uh, I work call center, mm -hmm. uh, and also I learn uh, other languages. Uh, you are learning another language. What what other language are you learning? Um, uh, French. French. Oh, that's good. Really good. So uh, you are in a basic level. You're beginning learning in French, or you're like intermediate. Mm. I see. I don't <risa> está en, en básico, nivel básico, está empezando a aprender o ya sabe un poquito no, de francés. No, sí quisiera aprender, pero no, no he empezado, digamos, todavía. Ah, ah, o sea, you would like to learn, ¿te le gustaría aprender? Sí. Ok, perfect, perfect. Thank you, Rosa, for your participation. Let's see, Jaime Reyes, are you there, Jaime? Yes, teacher. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, Jaime. How are you? Fine, I'm fine. Okay, perfect. And tell me, uh, why would you like to uh, learn English? Uh, in my case, uh, my goal is to speak completely in English. So, uh, so I am currently having a a little trouble with listening. Listening. Is, okay. Yeah, I, I I practice with songs in English. Okay, very good. We are going to practice a little bit of listening, and it's good to see you again to speak in English. And hopefully, we are going to learn a little bit more in these classes. Let's see. We have Juan Linares also. How are you, Juan? I'm fine, thank you, teacher. Okay, and tell me, what would you like to keep on learning English? Uh, I, I would like to learn English 
um, because I think is very important for for the life para la vida. Uh -huh, for life. Oh, for life. And I think uh, open opportun new opportunities. Yes, gives you more opportunities, exactly. And tell me, what do you do in your free time? In, in my free time, um, sometimes I, I play, play soccer with my friend. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, I like uh, play with my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I in my free time I I like watch TV or play video game. Okay, yes. perfect, perfect. Thank you, Juan Linares, for your participation. Okay. Let's see, Sandra. How are you, Sandra? Tell me, what would you like to learn English? Do you have a microphone, Sandra? Yeah, can I hear you? Can I hear you? Is it connected? <clears throat> No, I cannot hear you. Sorry. Probably it's a technical problem, as always. No, I cannot hear you. <laughs> Sorry, but probably in the next next class, you're going to talk, okay? Set up everything correctly, and next time I will make you talk. Let's see, Jaime Hernandez. Nice to see you again, Jaime. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Nice Good evening. to see you again. Yes. Good evening, what you been everybody. Doing? Uh, up, but uh, actually, I I like to uh, learn English uh, because uh, uh, in 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 other in other moments. So, oh, for example, on on. Uh, on December, I, I I am going to USA to visit my family, uh -huh. um, and I have um, my my nephew and my niece and another family. They uh, they learn they they speak English uh -huh. and Spanish when they uh, when they travel to the USA only. Only speak Spanish, uh -huh. and actually they are speaking speak English and two idioms. And when I visit my family, uh, I I I like to speak with my with my with my niece and my nephew. Hey, baby, how are you? What's your name? And, and other words, I I I, uh, I speak with with them. Yes. And, in my in my job, uh, I I speak it oh, only only speak Spanish. My, my job is I I work in the Ministerio Hacienda. Uh, my my function is uh, outreach. Um, when, uh, when I have a my in my free time, I I like the to see and, and listen and to do uh, very programs for uh, in, in English and in other uh, any programs for me is, is uh, it's very important for learning English. Okay, very good, Jaime. It, it, hopefully you are going to learn and also you are going to practice with your family in December. Try to speak in English with your family, okay, in December. Yes, yes okay. on December, yes. Yes, okay, perfect. Yes. Perfect, thank you. Let's see, Jose Arturo, how are you? Tell me, what would you like to learn English? Good evening, teacher. Um, I, would like, I would like to learn um, first, 
for knowledge. Mm -hmm. And second, um, I hope get a better job. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Uh, and, uh -huh. and I would like to have um, more opportunities. Um, and mm -hmm. I hope learn so much. Okay, perfect. And what, what, what do you like to do in your free time? Oh, uh, in my free time, I, I play video games mm -hmm. and on internet with my, with my children. Mm -hmm. They are in, in United States and I can, I can play with day. And so I, I like to play video games online okay perfect that's really good and do they do they speak english with you yeah uh, they 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 are learning too but i have to to um to teach him okay some, uh -huh. some, some words, <laughs> some words, some words. From, yeah. okay perfect try to teach them both right english and spanish Really good. Yeah. Let's see, Eric Cardoza. How are you? Tell me, why do you want to learn English? Good evening, teacher. And uh, well, in my case, I would like. Well, I want to learn English because, uh, maybe for the life is tool. It's a tool, mm -hmm. and we can we can find or get a better job or, I don't know or 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 the one thing is that you can speak in other idiom i would like yes. to to speak in other idiom a part of or a spanish obviously and i would like to teach in my in my ex college because i would like to be a teacher or or whatever thing Okay, very good. And what do you like to do in your free time? Well, in my free time, I would like to do, well, I, I like to do um, play soccer. Mm -hmm. I try to play soccer and maybe watch series and listen to music and visit to my girlfriend. And okay. Okay, very good. Very good. Nice to meet you, Eric. Let's nice to see. Meet you too. We have Carla Merino. Are you there, Carla Merino? Yes, teacher. Good night. Good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure to see you again. Okay, it's a pleasure to see you again also. And, well, you have your camera off, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> tell me, uh, have you been practicing English? Yes, yes. When I have opportunity, I like to practice in my free time. I like to watch some videos on YouTube and sometimes I like to watch some movies and, and sometimes I search some tests on Google. Okay, perfect, perfect. And what do you do in your free time right now nowadays? Um, my free time, I like to visit my grandma because she lives alone. And other thing, to, I like to help my children with their homework. Okay, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Nice to see you again, Carla. Let's see, okay, Aisa teacher. Ortiz. Are you there, Aisa? Hi, teacher. Hi, how are you? I'm very fine. I like to see you again. Okay, it's nice to see you again, Aisa. And tell me, uh, have you been practicing English or how have you been feeling like has been evolving your English? Do you like uh, learning mo like more words or is kind of difficult for you? Okay, teacher. Well, but I like I like English better. And I learning and I watching TV, I watching and uh, videos. How do you say enriquecer? No, no la escucho, teacher. Ah, sorry, sorry. Enriquecer de conocimiento, right? Yes, teacher. 
Yeah. Que enriquecer is like to enrich, but like it, it's, you can say like to acquire more knowledge. Okay. And um, 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 to reach, sería me dijo. Uh -huh, to enrich. Uh -huh. My vocabulary. Okay. And I'm watching videos in YouTube. And my free watching, time, uh -huh. and my free time, I stay at home mm -hmm. and I help with my child and the homework and I visit my family. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, very good. Thank you for that information and your participation, Aiza. And it's nice to see you again. And we have also Walter, I guess that is the last person, right? How are you, Walter? Uh, I'm fine, teacher. Thank you. Okay, tell me, why, why would you like to, or why do you like to speak in English or to learn English? Uh, because uh, for me, it's necessary mm -hmm. for uh, uh, a future job. And uh, probably I travel uh, another country. Uh, it's important, it's very important. It's really important. Okay, yes. perfect. Perfect, thank you, Walter, for your participation. And nice to meet you all and nice to see you, some of you again. And we are going to learn English. We are, I, I like to give you some homeworks, like short homeworks at the end of every class. So that's what we are going to do today. A mí, yo les pongo a veces tareas para que practiquen y para que vengan ya aquí Eh, más que todo para poder practicar el inglés de una manera más dinámica pero eso es lo que vamos a hacer en este momento so I'm going to give you a little bit of introduction in uh, this class for today right so in this class participants will be first introduced to passive voice using by so we are going to talk about passive voice I don't know if you have studied with the platform already have you checked the platform already ya vieron la plataforma Yes, teacher. Yes. No, some of you, they, you have done it. Some of you, you haven't done it. Perfect. No problem. So we are going to talk about passive voice. Do you know any idea what passive voice is? Ideas que es la passive voice it's, o voz pasiva. What is that? Uh, can be a different, different way to say, say something. Mm-hmm. Is a different way to say something, right? Is a we normally we talk in active voice, right? Active voice, we the, the important part of the active voice is the subject, right? So for example, who does the action? Who is the doer of the action? That is the important part of the active voice. And passive voice is different, right? So the action is important. No who does it, but who receives the action. That's why is called passive voice. So we are going to talk about also different places. And um, do you know any landmark also? Uh, do you know what a landmark is? Um, I no idea. No idea. For example, a landmark can be a place in a country, right? Can be, for example, uh, Quadipeca Lake. Do you know Quaripeca Lake? Okay, so that is a landmark. It's a place where you can visit and you can, it's a big place, it's a famous place, and it can be a natural place, puede ser algo natural, or it can be also, um, for example, if you go to the United States and you visit the a Liberty Statue, La Estatua de la Libertad, it's another landmark. So that is not a natural landmark, that is like a structure, right? Like a bill, a big statue, right? Una estatua grande, that is another landmark. So we have different landmarks in different countries, right? Do you know any landmark here or in any other country? ¿Conocen algún landmark de algún otro país o de aquí de El Salvador? Yeah. Which I, ones? I know uh, it's called Pueblo Viejo. Pueblo Viejo. Yeah. Where is that located? 
es, es en Costa Rica, en, oh. en, um, um, en Caribbean Beach. Mm -hmm. Okay, and is it is it is it beautiful? Is it like small? Is it big? Yeah. It's, 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 it's really beautiful and the sun is white. Uh, the sun is perfect. And all day and all night is, is a big party. Okay, Please. that's interesting. That's and interesting. Teacher, so, yes. What about in Paris, uh, La Torre Eiffel? Yeah, the Eiffel Tower or Eiffel Tower, that is another landmark. Exactly, Torre Eiffel. That is another landmark in Paris. Uh, have you visited uh, Eiffel Tower no. before? No, right. Only in pictures, <laughs> right? Only in pictures. No, yeah, it was a threat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but one day, probably, we will visit Eiffel Tower. Uh, but also, like Machu Picchu is another landmark, right? It's another landmark. The Colosseum in Italy is another one. The Colosseum. And the Great Wall of China is another landmark, right? So we have different landmarks. So um, we have here different things about landmarks. Let me see here. Yes, I guess that I don't have right now the, the information here or the link for you to listen to it because you are not able to read it, right? It's like too small, I guess. It's, está como pequeño, ¿verdad? Lo ven pequeño, ¿verdad? You are not able to read it. Yes. Yeah, I will read a little bit of it. It says the Great Wall of China was begun in 2014 before Christ. It is the largest structure ever built. So that is the China, the Great Wall of China, La Gran Muralla China, right? The Colosseum in Rome was opened in 80 AD and it was sometimes filled with water for ship battles. We have also the Machu Picchu in Peru was constructed around 1400 AD and it was probably a home for the Inca royal family. The Statue of Liberty in New York was opened in 1886. It was a gift in the United States from the people of France. And the last landmark that we have there is the Eiffel Tower in Paris it was completed in 1889. It was built for the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. So which was a gift? Which of the la landmarks was a gift? ¿Cuál fue un regalo de, esas, de todas esas landmarks? Which one was a gift? Uh, the State of Liberty. The statue, oh, okay. the statue of liberty, the statue of liberty. statue of liberty. Okay, that was a gift from which country? De qué país fue un regalo? From France. French. From France, right? France. France gave the statue of liberty to the United States. Very good. Which was used for events? Which landmark was used for events? Para eventos. Uh -huh. Um, el, the Coliseum. The Coliseum. Very good, the Coliseum. Very good, because they have bottles there, right? So that was an event. And let's see what else do we have here. What else do you know about these places? ¿Qué más saben acerca de estos lugares? What, what, what information can you give me about these places, these landmarks? Do you know something else? Have you visited one of them? Would you like to visit one of them? Yeah, I would like to visit Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu, I, right. I, I love all around the culture and, and history. It's um, a very important place. Yes, actually, it's really, it's really great. Like, it's a, a different experience. And it's huge, right? The Machu Picchu is huge. And I think that probably it would be like a very good experience to go there and, and know about uh, the culture of, of Incas, right, in Peru. Very good. And it says, uh, what are the three most famous landmarks in your country? What do you think uh, that is a famous landmark here in El Salvador? 
Salvador del mundo. Salvador del mundo, yeah. Uh -huh. What else? Yeah. Plaza Gerardo Barrio. Plaza Gerardo Barrios, ajá. Uh -huh. Reloj de flores. Uh -huh. Reloj de flores, ajá. Uh -huh. What else do we have here? Um, uh, uh, Cotopeca Lake. Cotopeca Lake. Santana. In Santana, yes. Um, yes. Uh, Sihuatehuacan. Sihuatehuacan, ajá. Uh -huh. um, which one? Caluco. Caluco, very good. Palacio Different. Nacional. No sé. Palacio Nacional, yes. It can be also, right? The theaters. So we are going to check some of uh, landmarks here, right? What is this landmark? What is this landmark? Iglesia del Rosario. Have you visited it? ¿Ya la han oh, visitado? No. no? I went, I, I went, yes, I went there once, but I was not able to get inside because there was a mass, y había misa, no pude entrar. Entonces, Plaza Libertad. Plaza Libertad, yes, that's another one, right? Plazas, parks also, very good. For example, this church, Iglesia del Rosario, it is located in eastern side of Plaza Libertad. It is recognized as one of the iconic buildings in the Centro Histórico from San Salvador. So we have it in San Salvador. It's actually, it's really beautiful. From the outside, it's not like a big church, but from the inside, the inside is like really cool, right? The colors and everything. That was really cool to see. We have also Joya de Seren, right? Joya that is Seren. another. Have you visited Joya de Seren? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right? What is there? For example, if I was a foreigner, si yo fuera de otro país, y le digo, ¿qué hay en Joya de Seren? ¿Qué hay ahí? Um, um, a very interesting um, trip. A lot of things. Walking lot, around the things. structure. Uh -huh, the sculptures, yes. Very and, good. And, and, and other, other piece to archaeology. Archaeology, archaeology, very good. Archaeology pieces, yeah. right? And structures yeah. from yeah. indigenous, right? Native people. And very, we can uh -huh. find the first footprint of of um, a man, uh -huh. and and one footprint to a child. Ah, uh, you have footprints from. Indigenous people yes. from Indians. Oh, okay. Okay. I didn't know that. Pro I guess I remember that. That that is like a like a historical fact. But yes, I didn't remember that. That is true. That is true. Exactly. It says here that it's located in the vicinity of San Juan Opico and Las Flores in the Department of La Libertad. It was inhabited at least since the year 400 and it was abandoned around the year of 600 due to eruption of Laguna Caldera. So I didn't know that it was it was abandoned because of that. But according to the information, it is supposed to be abandoned because of Laguna Caldera. We have another one. We have also Puerto de la Libertad. Have you visited Puerto de la Libertad? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I did. Yes. 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 Right. What can you do there? ¿Qué se hace ahí? ¿Qué podemos hacer ahí? What can you do there? We take a shower. <laughs> take a shower, exactly. We can you swim, can swim right? there. Yeah, we eat can. in the rest, swim. someone else. Eat, eat, eat in the eat, restaurant. Uh, what, what kind of food? You can, can we serve eat? there? Seafood. 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 We also, can we eat can cocktails. Serve. Cocktails. Very delicious, right? Delicious food. Yes. In cheap, in cheap food. Well, some of them is cheap. It is considered the closest port to the city of San Salvador. It has mechanical games, which is a novelty. It has mechanical games, right? How 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 is it called? Como Surf se llama city. Surf City. Yes, Surf have city. you visited Surf City? Ya no. no. <laughs> we don't we don't live that often, right? No. Good. Okay, perfect. But it, it's it seems good. It seems cool also with the mechanical games. 
And another one is La Puerta del Diablo. Have you visited La Puerta del Diablo? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what can you do there? Yes. ¿Qué, qué yes. pueden hacer ahí? ¿Qué se hace ahí? If I go there, what can I do? Just take pictures. Take and pictures. Uh -huh. Take a walk. walk. There, right? You can walk. Yeah. Exactly. And some people say that they are like fixing uh, Puerta del Diablo to, to have like stirs or something like that. Están haciendo gradas, dicen some people. Some people say, I don't know, right? But uh, probably it will be more touristic in the future. It says, La Puerta del Diablo is a rock formation and tourists are located in the municipality of Panchimalco. It is located one kilometer from Balboa Park. Okay, perfect, very good. Let's see if we have something else. Ah, we have Cuarepeque Lake, of course, right? Yeah. Lago de Cuarepeque. Uh, Cuarepeque Lake or Lake Cuarepeque is a lake of volcanic origin located 18 kilometers south of the city of Santa Ana in the municipality of El Congo. So it, that is kind of weird because it's not located in Cuarepeque, it's located in El Congo, right? So I don't know why they call him Cuarepeque Lake. It should be Congo Lake, right? Because it's in Congo. It has an island called Isla del Cerro or Teopan. The toponym Cuarepeque means hill of snakes in the Nahuatl language. So Cuarepeque, what is the meaning of Cuarepeque? Hills of snakes, like Montaña de Serpientes, right? Hill of snakes. Have you visited Cuarepeque? Have you gone there? Yes, I did. Yes. 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 What can you do there besides taking pictures and visit the, the lake? ¿Qué se puede hacer um, ahí? I, I drive a... Take a photo. Um, for... Recuerdos? Aha. Uh -huh. A memories ride or recuerdos is... Recuerdos is like um, it's not memories. It's like how do you say that? Recuerdos is like souvenirs. Souvenirs, exactly souvenirs. Thank you, Maria. Souvenirs. Yes, it's souvenirs. You take souvenirs, not memories. Like souvenirs. Memories is in your head, right? But souvenirs are the physical things. And also you have jet ski also, right? Motos acuáticas, jet ski. So yeah. you can jet use ski. their jet ski. Yes, exactly, jet ski. So we have also different landmarks in around around the world. Uh, for example, can are you able to read this? Pueden leer esto? Yeah. Okay, can somebody help me reading, please? Alguien que me ayuda a leer esta parte? Can I? <laughs> yes, go ahead. The Great Wall of China was begun in 2014 before Christ in the largest man made structure ever built. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. That would be the Great Wall of China. Was begun. Was begun is in red. Why? Porque está en rojo eso de was begun. It's in passive voice, exactly. It's in passive voice. So, and if we are able to see here, it's 2014 BC. When we see BC, is before Christ, antes de Cristo, right? Before Christ. And it's the largest man made structure ever built. So, um, this is the passive voice. And how do we use the passive voice? We are going to have a little bit of information about the passive voice today. It says, if we don't know who did the action, and if there is no doer of the action, we can use the passive voice. If the fact is more important than the doer of an action. So that's when we use the passive voice, okay? Let's see another example here. Okay, somebody else can help me read this. This, please. Alguien más que me quiera ayudar a leer. Pueda ver la letra, por favor. Okay. 
one volunteer, un voluntario. Me teacher. Oh. Who said Mary. me? Maria. Okay, Maria. Go ahead. The Coliseum in Rome was opening in 1880. It was sometimes filled with water for ships, barrels. Bar bar is what you said for gladiatoria public expectation. Very good. The Coliseum, right, in Rome was open. Was open is another mm -hmm. passive voice, right? And if you can see here, 80 AD means Anno Domini, right? That is Latin, right? So now you know. And it was sometimes filled. Was filled is passive voice also, right? With water for she battles. It was used for gladiatorial contest and public spectacles. It was used as another passive voice, right? So uh, as we can see here, the passive voice is used to show interest in the person of object that experiences the action rather than the person of object that performs the action. In other words, the most important thing or person becomes the subject of the sentence. So that's how it's used the passive voice. We have another example here. Alguien más que me pueda ayudar a leer? Another volunteer? To read this Statue of Liberty? Me, teacher. Who said teacher, me? Teacher, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, what is the pronunciation of the, the second word? What is the second I mean, word? This one? Statue, uh -huh. Statue. Statue. Yes, statue. Now. Statue. Okay. Yes, exactly. So okay. the Statue of Liberty. So okay, uh, very good. You. Now, somebody else who wants to help me read the Statue of Liberty. Volunteers. Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. The Statue of Liberty in New York was opened in 1886. It was a gift to the United States from the people of France to represent the friendship between the two countries. Very good, perfect. So that is that is the landmark that was a gift, right? From France to the United States. That is the friendship between the two countries. And we have here how we form the passive voice, right? The passive changes the focus of a sentence or the simple pass use the past B plus past participle. So we, we have uh, two examples here, active and passive. The active is the president opened the building in 1931, 1931, right? So that is active voice. Ese es normal, ¿verdad? Como hablamos todos, voz activa. The president opened. Now in passive is, it was opened by the president. So, for example, we can change uh, it. Ahí está sustituyendo the building, ¿verdad? El edificio. Porque, ¿quién fue abierto? El edificio. ¿Por quién? Por el presidente, ¿verdad? Entonces, el edificio, or it, was open. Fue abierto by the president in 1931. So, that's how it changes to, from active to passive. Another example, otro ejemplo. An American architect designed the building. Un arquitecto americano diseñó, ¿el qué diseñó? El edificio. Very good. Entonces, lo que fue diseñado, ¿qué fue? El edificio. Eso cambia y lo último que ve en la oración pasa a ser lo principal. Lo que recibe la acción, en este caso el edificio, va a ser el sujeto. So the building was designed ¿Quién lo diseñó? An American architect. So it was designed by an American architect. That's it. You see, that is uh, how we change from active to passive. Is it easy or is it difficult? Easy. Easy, right? Easy, very easy. We are going to practice a little bit more. No problem. But it's that is the that is the way we, we change from active to passive, right? La voz pasiva cambia el enfoque de la oración. 
past of B and past participle. One important thing about the past voice is that we always, always use the past of B. In this case, it says the past of B or in the platform, you are going to see this because we are talking about how we change from the simple present tense, active, simple present tense to passive, simple present tense or uh, simple past tense, sorry. O sea, vamos a, en, en los ejemplos que tienen la plataforma, solo están hablando acerca del pasado, ¿verdad? El pasado en la voz activa y el pasado en la voz pasiva, pero se pueden utilizar en todos los tiempos, en presente, en pasado, en futuro. La voz pasiva puede cambiar en todos los tiempos. And siempre, siempre se va a utilizar el verbo to be y el past participle. So you have to learn past participles. Tienen que aprenderse los past participles para utilizar la voz pasiva correctamente. Let's see what time it is. We almost finished. Another uh, volunteer to read the Eiffel Tower, please. Un último voluntario para leer lo de la Torre Eiffel. Uh, me, teacher. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Um, the Eiffel Tower in Paris was completed in 1889. It was built for the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. At the time, the tower was built, many people were shocked and Eiffel once pretty gone, I can see that. Criticized? Criticized and accused of this disregarding engineering protocols. Exactly, perfect. Why and accused of disregarding engineering protocols. So as you can see, at the beginning, people didn't like Eiffel Tower. A la gente no le gustó la Eiffel Tower at the beginning, right? So the Eiffel, the person who, who built the Eiffel Tower was shocked and they criticized him. Very good. So I guess we are going to finish with this. Let's see, my sister just look. Okay, we are going to practice a little bit of passive voice because mañana van a practicarlo ustedes. So I want you to have an idea of the passive voice. All of these red things is passive voice. You see the verb to be and past participle. Verb to be, past participle. Verb to be, past participle. Verb to be, past participles. So this is the way how we are going to build the passive voice. And we have here this sentence. My sister, this book in 2010 wrote. My sister wrote this book in 2010, exactly, 2010. What is the meaning of this sentence? ¿Cómo, ¿Qué quiere decir esta oración? Mi hermana escribió este libro en el 2010. Very good. Is that in active or in passive voice? Active. Active voice. How can we change it to passive voice? Uh, this book was uh, was brought in what right was written or was written or was written what is was correct written mm -hmm. was written in by my sister 2010 okay let's see if it is correct This book was written, right? This book was written by my sister in 2010. Very good, perfect. So you see, who receives the action? The book, right? This book. So the book is now, now it's not uh, the person or the, 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 the thing that receives the action, now it's the subject, right? This book was written by my sister, right? So my sister is not the important thing. My sister is the doer, but now is in passive voice. Okay, perfect. When when we yes. when we use a pass voice, pass voice mm -hmm. the verb always always uh, gonna be in past participle. 
Yes, exactly. For example, here is road. What is the past participle of road? That is the past of write, right? So written is the past participle, exactly. And before the past participle, we are going to write the verb to be. We have to be careful with the verb to be, okay? Because here is in past, because this active voice is in past, simple past. So the verb to be is in past here. Yes? This book, I can say it was, it was. Yes, we can substitute this book by it, right? The pronoun it, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Perfect, so we have a homework for tomorrow. So we are talking about landmarks, right? Right? Okay, okay so we are going to, uh, you are going to talk about landmarks Tomorrow, ustedes van a hablar de las landmarks tomorrow. In passive voice, try to use at least one sentence in passive voice. You can talk about landmarks about other countries, or you can talk about landmarks from uh, El Salvador or Central America, right? We have examples here, Eiffel Tower. We have the Statue of Liberty. We have, Okay, I don't want something like really big. We, you can say this, right? You can prepare something like this. Pueden preparar algo corto como esto. You see, the Colosseum in Rome was open in 80 D. It was sometimes filled the water for ship battles. It was used for gladiatorial contests and public spectacles. So algo corto, something short. And you have to use the passive voice. And you are going to talk about landmarks if you want to you can bring a picture or i can look for a picture right and we can uh, check the landmark you're talking about so para mañana what we are going to do just a short paragraph you see it's really short la puerta del diablo puerta de la libertad joya de seren we yeah. have el salvador and we have landmarks from other countries questions preguntas um no question teacher no questions. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's oh, oh. See. oh yeah. Um uh -huh. yes, I rem I remember that um when we have to use the passive voice. When it's when currently used. When do we have to use the passive voice? Very good question. Actually, we uh we use it as we can see here, if we don't know who did the action, if there is no doer of the action, or if the fact is more important than the doer of the action. Normally, o normalmente la, la voz pasiva se usa en textos, ¿verdad? En textos como libros o en textos formales. That's how we use the passive oh. voice, ¿ok? Por eso es importante aprenderla a utilizar. No la usamos para hablar, normalmente no la usamos así, sino que solo en textos formales como en este tipo de presentaciones. So in these kind of presentations, we use passive voice. Very good question. This, this, this. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Thanks for information. Okay. Thank you for your participation and also for being here. And I will see you tomorrow because I guess it's time to finish the class. So have a good evening. Okay. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. Good I will night, see you teacher. tomorrow. Have a nice night. Good night. Good night. I see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I see you. Tomorrow. I see you.